and welcome to today's Peek Up the Isle with me, Jenny from Night Ceremonies. Today I'm particularly excited because we are joined by a very special lady. She is the face, the very green face of the musical Wicked. It is Elphaba herself, the uber talented Alice Fern. So good morning, Alice, and how are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad. Surviving. Surviving. It's nice to feel like we're coming out of things, isn't it? It feels a little bit more positive. <laughs> Surviving is definitely the um, the word of the year, I would say. I know. Just hanging on in there, aren't we? White and as, as you can see, the sun is shining through my window, so oh, it can't be all that Oh, I know. Bad. Well, that always makes things better, doesn't it? So. It does. Um, so obviously, as you know, I've been a big fan of yours. Um, you obviously are Elphaber in Wicked or have been and um, a huge, huge stage presence. Now we could talk about that and all of the other things that you've been in besides. I mean, you've been in TV shows, uh, all sorts of other performances on the stage. But today we're going to talk about your wedding day. So a whole other performance. <laughs> It's um, so nice to talk about something different, actually. <laughs> something really positive as yeah. well and happy. So now um, I know a little bit about your day, but in order to sort of unpack it for our followers, mm. I just thought let's kind of start at the beginning. And of course, that involves your lovely hubby, Gavin, so <laughs> who I believe is outside and can't make you a cup of tea at the moment. He which can't make me a cup of tea. He's doing some gardening. Well, because the sun's come out, so of course, goes straight outside. And he's actually just fixing the fencing down the bottom so you know it's very very handy my uh, husband <laughs> <laughs> is he available to hire can we can we book i know god he should be i think he just needs to sell himself out there i mean he might as well he's very good at it oh bless him oh well listen um obviously there's a story there so tell us sort of how you met and and how you sort of progressed to that proposal moment. absolutely so well we actually met when we were in a show uh, and we were doing dirty rotten scoundrels the musical at the savoy theater in london and um for two people that had been in the same industry for 15 16 years by that point we were like how have we never actually met uh, we'd never met and never seen each other and not been in a show together, not even met, you know, at the pubs that, you know, are frequented by the theatre folk after yeah. their shows. So, um, and I have to say that in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, we had a particular group of people that were just, we just all connected so well. I mean, yeah. I've got friends for life that actually ended up being my bridesmaids. Oh, wow. Um, from that show. So, um, and my maid of honour. Um, so, yeah, it was a really sort of interesting cast for that in that we all very much got on and, and had such a really wonderful time. Um, and yeah, we met on that and it was a slow burner, actually. It was, um, I think I'd, I'd just broken up with someone else and as had he. And, um, and we started very much towards the end of the run that we were there for. We started to uh, go to the, the local sort of, Spanish tapas place after the show mm. um which was a place called the porthouse which is still there I hope after this lockdown is finished um and we used to just because I, I love tapas and I love red wine so it was like you know I, I went there and I was gonna go there anyway we started off as groups of us went there and slowly but surely it just became the two of us that went sort of you know three to four nights a week um and we just chatted mainly and just you know just really got to know each other and then we cut to he moved in very, very quickly after the show finished um, uh, because we just couldn't be really out without each other's side. It was, seemed very strange that we weren't suddenly in each other's shoes every day from the show. And uh, and yeah, I think it was two and a half, maybe three years later. And um, we were on holiday in Santorini in Greece. And um, we I had booked this restaurant that I'd been uh, told a friend had told me about it that it had the best sunset in Santorini oh, wow. and so I went oh well I'll book it I'll book it so I booked it miles in advance and I said um I'm booking this in advance hoping that you'll give me the best table well we absolutely got the best table like we could not have had the sunset more perfectly in our view no tables in front of us right on the edge of this restaurant oh lovely um and during the holiday in Greece I don't know if you've been to Santorini but there's this sort of um, it's it's a bit like I wonder what the toilets are like because it's all such on built on hills and it's like giant rock. It, there's always that slight worry of how good how good are the, is yeah. the toilet, how good is the sewage system, you know. <laughs> and it become this thing throughout the couple of days we've been there, which is like who's going to try the toilet out first? You know what I mean? So like who's going to go and see if it, how how what level we're at? 
Um, and that was it, that day. It was my turn. So we'd sat down. We'd ordered a, glo- a, a bottle of um, prosecco. I think I'd ordered. And uh, and I said, right, it's my turn to go and check the toilet. I'm going to go now. So we went to check it out. And a couple of minutes later, I come back and I remember this now, but I didn't clock it at the time. But I looked over at Gavin and he had looked at me and then just went <sighs> like that. And I really remember it now afterwards. And I went, I wondered why you looked all a bit sort of like stressed when I was coming towards the table. Um, I came towards the table. I picked up the menu and I started reading the menu, not knowing there was a box underneath the menu. So I was reading the menu going, I think I'm going to have you know X, Y, Z. And he just went, Alice. Uh, so my dog's just moving. Um, if you can hear it in the background. Um, and I went, what? And he went, look at that. And I just went, oh. And I thought he'd bought me a necklace, pair of earrings, something. It was absolutely guaranteed. I did not think it was a ring. Wow. Um, and I opened it up. And yeah, he got down on one knee. And uh, and there, whilst the sun was setting, he asked me to marry him. And it was amazing because that same week, I had got the call that I had got Elphaba and Wicked. Wow. So, it was one of those weeks that you just go, oh my goodness, this is just, maybe we should play the lottery because <laughs> um, I'm feeling very, very lucky. So yeah, it was it was amazing. And not how I thought he'd do it. He did it sort of very, uh, I don't want to say showman-like, but it was very sort of like, you know, with the sunset, very, very romantic. And I thought he'd probably do it like really randomly on a dog walk. Yeah. Um, what I hadn't noticed apparently, that he, he had been rocking around the Greece with this ring just in his pocket um and I just don't know how he did that without like freaking out I mean I'd have been in a constant state of stress but uh but yeah so it was that and then and then we um we let it sort of sit for a while because obviously then I got Elfber and I opened in Wicked but it was a, a not long after that that we started to chat about where we wanted it um and uh as which I'm sure is your next, is that going to be your next question uh, well you can tell us about it go for it yeah go for it <laughs> well because you know it's always that saying of like you know do you have the same idea of what your wedding's going to be and I know and Gavin was very you know I want you to have the best day and what's your vibe and I said well I've got to be honest I think I want it to be abroad yeah. like I don't know how but I just have this I, we neither of us have a particular uh, connection to anywhere in the UK you know a lot of people go home yeah, to yeah. get married and stuff and um and although we both have homes like I have Cumbria where I come from and I have and Gavin has Colchester neither yeah. particularly wanted to get married there um Cumbria I've I've been to loads of wedding in, weddings in Cumbria and um and it's just it's like the weather is just so so much trickier to to, to yeah work out um not that you can ever guarantee it, but it's obviously, it's really tricky up in Cumbria. Um, Colchester, I was like, I can't get married in Colchester. I can't get married in Essex. I just can't do it. So um, I, we sort of went, well, then if we're not really bothered about here, where are we going? And um, I think we had two places in mind. We were either going to go to South of France, where it's sort of drivable to, yeah. uh, or we said Italy. So I said, right, we have to go on two trek visits then to sort of, you know, just see some places and see the and see what we want. And uh, I booked three days off Wicked, and we flew to Italy. We flew to Tuscany in Italy, and um, we saw six venues in four days. Wow! Um, but it was the third one that quite simply couldn't be beaten, and we saw three others after that, and they didn't have a chance. Um, and uh, and it, we never even went to the south of France then to look after that because we'd seen this just absolutely perfect place. And I remember getting in the car and um, after we'd seen this place and I just, got, we closed the doors, we put the windows out, we put the air con and I just went, I think I love it! And I just like <laughs> burst into tears. Because um, I just really wanted him to love it as well. Yeah. So I didn't want it to be me going, you know, it's it's all my sort of like day. And he was just like, I, I just can't get over it. I said, it was the views in, in the place that we were at. It was, um, we were driving up the hill towards it. And I remember Gavin saying, um, the views are going to be to die for up here because it was right on the edge of the cliff, yeah. uh, looking over this huge lake, uh, Lake Trismeno. And um, it just was, and it was obviously like a perfectly clear, beautiful day. Yeah. You know, you just sit there and go, I just have to, I just have to get married here. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So yeah, so that's yeah. the story. I was going to say for a lot of our couples, they have that same reaction that you yeah. guys had, which is 
when you know you know it's a bit like meeting the right person isn't it when you get the venue that just works for you and on all levels I think that's such a lovely moment isn't it and it's nice that you both had that at the same time and and didn't have to have that awkward conversation one likes it one doesn't yeah that was just amazing but you know I know that lots of our couples and our followers will understand this but I know that you um you separated things, didn't you? You had two ceremonies. So do you want to sort of explain that for those that don't understand what, what sure. happened? Sure. It's, it's, if you're getting married abroad or actually anywhere that isn't a registered sort yeah. of like, you know, place that you can actually legally get married, uh, there's always that place you have to go somewhere else to get, legally sign the deeds, essentially. And, um, and if you want to do that in Italy, it's just super tricky because you have to be there a certain amount of days. And I, like, now it's, Bit after Brexit, so I don't know if that's going to be even harder. Yes. For the time it was going to be, you have to be there for a certain amount of days. You ha- your paperwork has to be in order, um, and it has to be pretty much a Catholic service as well. Like there are so many things that you have to get to grips sure. with, and, it, and it, so it can be. Re- and we didn't want that, if I'm honest. Um, we're not particularly religious, so sure. I was like, oh, I, I don't know if I want all those those words that they have to say and the prayers and the, you know, that's just not very me. And, yeah. uh, and it was it wasn't Gavin either. So we made the decision that we would get married uh, at a registry office here in London, really close to the wedding itself. Um, yeah. So I think we did two weeks, I think, for it, mm. and um, we. You know, at first we were just like, right, we will just go with two, you know, uh, witnesses and we'll just get married here legally and then that'll be it. And in the, in the end, um, it got a little bit bigger than that because I was like, no, I think we need, no, I, I think my mum has to be there for that. I think your mum has to be there for that. And then so, okay, so we'll have really close family. And then, and um, I look, we went to this place, we, we, did it at uh, in the Marlborough Town Hall here in London, which if anyone wants to do it this way is just the most wonderful venue. Um, they've got a variety of rooms of different sizes, but they're all so elegant. Oh, and um, there, and you can have like a hundred people in one if you want. Um, the steps outside are glorious, so you get a nice picture if you want as well. Um, and they could not have made it simpler, easier, and more what we wanted. So. Mm. Um, they send you a couple of scripts and you can go down the religious route if you wanted to. You can go down the very traditional route. You can do very much like modern, contemporary kind. As long as you say the right words, that you know, that we're, we're fine. Um, we played music as we walked in. Um, and it was so it was a really, re- actually a really lovely day. We had really close family. So we had my mum and dad and my godmother. Mm. We had um, Gavin's sister, mum uh, and the nephews, uh, his nephews. And um, directly at his dad, and directly after it, we got married. And I, I cried at that service. I like, I was not expecting it. But as soon as they sort of, you know, start saying the very traditional words, yeah. I suddenly literally couldn't like hold it together, and I was, I was weeping, my like crying my eyes out. Um, and uh, and we had a photographer there as well, catching the day, yeah. a friend of ours that would just sort of, you know, I said, it's not huge, but it's just, can you capture the day? Sure. I'd eat, and I'd got a dress, I'd got a white dress from ASOS. Yeah, that was beautiful, I saw. It was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, she was like a hundred pounds and yeah. it was so nice, this dress. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so then we got, and then what we decided on the day was, that we would go back to the Savoy Hotel, which obviously we met at the Savoy Theatre, which is right next door, as in a part of the building of the Savoy. And uh, I'd emailed them and said, we're getting married that day, but it's not a big thing. We just want somewhere to eat. Well, we got to the Savoy Hotel and they um, reserved us this room. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was on its own. They gave us like two waiters and they just went, what do you want? And we'll just do it. And they made it so, they even they put flowers everywhere for us. And they just made it so, so beautiful. And um, and I said, I've just got a playlist. Could you just play that? We'll sort it, don't worry. And we were overlooking out the window. We could see the Savoy Theatre oh, no. um, right opposite. So yeah. it was a sort of like a full circle moment for us in where we'd met. Um, and um, and yeah, and so, and then that, that day when everyone, we'd had a couple of hours, maybe three hours of a meal, people started to leave, all of us started to leave. And we said, what should we do now? And we walked down the strand in 
Gavin full text me in a wedding dress and went and had a drink in um, a couple of the bars that we always went to when we were at the Savoy Theatre. We just would have a cocktail or a champagne and we just went, that's it. We're with the marriage certificate in Gavin's hand. So that's it, we're we're married, that's it legally. And it was actually a really nice day having expected it to just feel very paperworky. Um, It was a really lovely thing to uh, celebrate, but actually just acknowledge yeah. Um, as well for us you know it wasn't a big event but we acknowledged together that we that that had happened and we'd signed those papers and yeah. we you know it was all done and dusted and um and that was really really nice and we really loved that um yeah I also think- gave me a, also gave me a chance to wear for the first time my wedding shoes my yeah. actual wedding shoes. I thought I'm gonna wear them in yeah they weren't ruby slippers were they no they were they no. were no <laughs> I mean, what you've just described is amazing. And and to be honest, our couples obviously using a celebrant, they would separate that legal part out, which can seem quite alien to a lot of people. But actually, it works really well because, like you say, you can acknowledge that moment. You can separate the marriage bit out and and celebrate that. And And then actually... And it didn't take away from the big day when we went in in any way. And I mean... um, we both wept on the on the next day in Italy as well. Like Gavin yeah. was a mess, you know, because that went and my mum was a mess. So it, it didn't yeah. take anything away from the big day, which you think it might. And I think I, even I will say that I thought it might at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if the more we made it bigger, and I'm saying bigger and it wasn't big, but, I'm, you know, the more I wore a white dress, the more yeah. we went and celebrated it. You know, um, you would th- think it would take something away from it and it just did not and it was just it was gorgeous actually and and in a way you get celebrated twice yeah I mean and it looked phenomenal from the pictures that I saw and I just think then that kind of maybe settled some of the nerves surrounding the whole thing and then it made maybe obviously the the wedding abroad something you can look forward to without that sort of stress perhaps and and that sort of wedding overwhelm and so tell us about the the wedding abroad what happened and what did you do um so so there are um always sort of like worries if you've got a very specific idea of how you want your wedding to look and you go abroad it's obviously trickier because you've got to be the person that if you've got specific colors and specific specific ski uh, themes you need to get those there um and I was I wanted colourful, which is very, very easy in um, Italy because everything is very vibrant, vibrant. And so their colour schemes are always very vibrant. Um, I wanted it to be colourful. And I wanted there to be this hint of um, a sort of dark, like almost pinky rouge uh, with a copper. Um, and um, I, I said, how do I? And the stuff that the, the wedding venue that we hired was utterly brilliant they were amazing and you if you wanted to go to them you could go without anything and it would look amazing yeah. like they yeah. would make that venue look incredible because they know that the majority of their clients are coming from abroad sure. and can't bring it um so but I was you know adamant that I wanted certain things and so I was like no I want that I want that and I had this uh, amazing idea of I say amazing I just I had this idea of like having um a copper beer barrel that was just filled all day. And so my dad got an old um, like barrel from up north from one of the farms, the local oh, farms oh. where he lives. He cut it in half, he put a handle on it, he put a sign on it. He, it's like a little project from, he spray painted it copper and it became like a beer barrel wow. that we used when we got there. So I was like, we had things like this and I wanted um, a wheelbarrow as well that was filled uh, with some like, like water and stuff like that that people could drink that was it and I wanted that copper so then I suddenly had these quite big items that I needed to get there and so what we did was looking into hiring a van to send it over there um now it does get semi-complicated and luckily for us we found someone that said oh no like it's a family member listen have the van just pay for the just pay for all your petrol and pay for the you know and Gavin went with his brother-in-law and they drove there in two days. It's quite easy to get to Italy, um, actually. Yeah. If they, uh, you know, obviously this is pre-Brexit, but um, <laughs> but and so I know that there are other issues now that you have to contend with. But like the trip itself, he, they had the best time. They were just having a lovely time. They stopped off at a hotel at one and just drove the rest of the way. Um, and you see some amazing sights as they were driving yeah. there. 
So I filled this van with everything I could imagine. I filled it with, um, also we had some fake flowers that I wanted to use on the tables because flowers can notoriously wilt, you know, quite quickly in that heat over in Italy. So I I had uh, a lot of really, really good fake flowers. They were like, they didn't look fake. that I'd had sort of made and put together. I put them in, I put my dress in there. Um, I put some suitcases in there because I was like, we're going for two weeks. So we kind of need more stuff than I think I can get on the plane. Um, so it was a really, really useful thing. Oh, and we also yeah. stopped off for, for alcohol. Yeah. Um, uh, at uh, Calais, just to, you know, to add into the, wow. to the mix of the thing, yeah. So so it was really like a really super useful thing to do. Yeah, um, good idea. And we got there and it was all there. And I, I arrived the day after. So they'd unpacked the van. So I, I arrived in brilliant time to not have to help in any way. Yeah. And um, and it was also good because we were all there for a week. The wedding party was there for a week. So to have sort of that alcohol as well, we were like, yeah. right, we don't have to go and do a huge. We had loads of water, loads of um and we also sent they sent them out to get a lot of food in that van. And so it was actually super useful to have. So I would suggest that that's something that is really beneficial if you can yeah. find a way to get make it work. However, these big venues that are renowned for weddings tend to sort a lot of it out. And they at every point, this venue was like, we can handle that if you want us to. We can handle that if you want us to. We can do that. We'll do that. Yeah. They even the wedding venue that we had they even had a delivery each day of bread and cheese and 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 you didn't have to do anything if you didn't right. if you didn't want to leave the place you didn't have to yeah. um so that you know it was I, I mean i will never be able to thank or give enough credit to that wedding venue and and uh, marco who runs it because they they have got it down to a tea that place Brilliant. um but yes it was so it's quite and then and then my dad and his best friend drove it back because obviously gavin went on honeymoon with me yeah. Um, and Gavin uh, and so my dad drove it back he had an equally brilliant time driving back I couldn't wait driving and you know going through Switzerland and oh, seeing the mountains God. and yeah. Yeah, like glorious it was really so it fun. became like a, a bit of a road trip and uh, almost like a little stag experience with the yeah and that's kind, <laughs> that's kind of what I wanted it to be as well I was like I really want that to be a thing I want you to feel like that's a part of it yeah you know a little bit of an adventure yeah. that yeah. that you, you know that, that you're having and and so you, you know you can make anything you can make something you know anything if you wanted to and that's sort of what we sold it as and it sort of really worked yeah so tell us about the dress for um the one in Italy because did you have to sort of did you throw caution to the wind and think I'm just going to have the dress I want or did you bear in mind the temperature and the whole sort of vibe of that destination um I did think of I did think it of the heat, yes. Um, I've also, I just don't like my arms particularly. You know, I always end up getting like sort of that sort of ridge that you see in my, cut, you know. And I was like, gosh, I'm really worried because really I need to have something that's not got any arms on it, you know. Um, uh, and so I was quite worried about that and thinking, what the hell do I do? Um, but I didn't have anything other in my mind apart from that slight worry of, oh, maybe I should like try and do something with my arms that's not, so that they're open um and uh we were I, I there was I was looking online at everything and and um my mum me and my mum split the dress in the end um because she was like I have to buy my daughter's wedding dress and I was like oh. well we'll split it I am playing Elphaba so I really don't think you are retired and I'm playing Elphaba I just don't think that's right but mm. um let's split it so we so we decided with whatever it was going to be we we're going to split yeah. it and um how did we come to the dress that we came to? So I went to this place and I fell in love with this woman who was in charge. She was great. She was an absolute hoot. And I sat down and I said, listen, I just don't, I don't know where I'm at. I'm going to pick a couple out. And then she, hopefully and she went and she was amazing. I suppose most people are when you go to these wedding shops, yeah. they know that they're aware of what you're kind of looking for before you do in a way. Um, and so I picked a couple out and she went, okay, Okay, she went, I see what you're going with. I see what your style is. And then she just looked at the collection. She went, give me a moment. <laughs> and I was like, I'm obsessed with her. She was, she was unreal. Yeah. And she just looked at them all and she went, and she had an assistant called Caroline. 
Caroline is hemorrhage. Um, do you know her dress? Also get me the, and she just reeled off these dresses, right? And so she, they brought them out and then we started trying them on. And, um, and they were all gorgeous. Wow. They were all just exactly what I wanted. Mm. Um, some were a bit too bougie is the word I would use. They were a bit too, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I was a bit, I don't think, it's very Italy, but I think it's not what I'm looking for. Um, and then she went, okay, I'm going to try one that's over your budget. And then, of course, that was the one I absolutely wanted. Oh. Isn't it? 100%. I put it on and I just, and I didn't cry. Now, a lot of people obviously well up and cry when they get sure. their wedding. That was not my reaction. My reaction was like a kid at Disneyland. Yeah. Hyper excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I love it. I think I love it. You know, and I was just, I, I just was that. And I was that all day. Yeah. Um, and I just didn't want to take it off. And um, there was, uh, it was, it, I mean, I think you've probably got some of the, the images. Um, uh, and it was, it was long, it, hilariously long sleeved, but it was like an, uh, it was sort of like opaque design. So it was sure. see through, but it just had this sort of like lovely beading all the way down the arms. Nice. And mum did say, she went, are you going to be hot? And I just went, I don't care. Yeah. I said, look at it. I said, I've never felt a million dollars before, but I feel a million dollars in it. Yeah. And, uh, and that was, and that was for me, what I wanted to feel like, you know, some people feel very differently and, and it's whatever you want, really. It's your wedding day. Yeah. Um, and so um, I said, right, I'm going to go away. I'm going to think about it. Um, and I went away and didn't really think about it just went when am I going back to put the deposit down you know that was the the main sort of thing and um and it was I was it what Gavin Gavin did say I thought he would be in something like that um he said I knew you wouldn't do the boot like sort of like you know the the big sort of princessy dress one, yeah, yeah. And he said that's the only thing I knew you wouldn't arrive in um yeah. he said but anything else was sort of a go up um but yeah I felt um it was so it was so right that dress and um and it fit at the time but I did lose a bit of weight and they were just um as you do sort of out just made out of stress um when you're heading, heading towards your wedding day um but it was just like I it, it also sparkled in the sun because it had those sort of like gems on it and so of course when you're in the sunshine I did think that I was like yeah it might catch the sun quite a bit and I was like that'd be good um so yeah. You know, and then and then I was a little bit worried about the heat on the day because, of course, when you look the week before, it was like 35 degrees. And I was like, oh, Rikey. <gasps> we'd managed to pick like the, like one of the hottest weeks in Italy. Mm. And it was fine in the shade. You were absolutely fine in the shade. But obviously, during the ceremony at three o'clock, it was hot. super hot. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, I have no memory of that. I don't remember being boiling. I don't remember sweating. I don't remember any of it. It was, I just didn't even notice it. And I think because you're just so focused on everything else and you're focused on your day and you're focused on enjoying it. Yeah. Um, and I just, we all had fans. I mean, I'd, I'd really gone to town. I'd gone, I'd bought everyone parasols. I'd bought hand fans so that they could have wow. them. Um, that all were in the theme of the, of the wedding. And so we had all those things. And uh, so everyone had something just to get, out of the heat but as soon as we went into the shadows yeah. we were absolutely fine but yeah I, I don't even remember that so I'm so glad I went with what I wanted as opposed to what I thought I needed absolutely. because I didn't even notice it at the time yeah and I know that you said that you cried at both sort of weddings did you did you have that sense on the day that build up of emotion and and what happened after the ceremony so talk us through sort of the flow of the day what did you do um well it was as I say it was at three o'clock or was it three thirty? It was one of those um, that the ceremony was, and um, it was all in this one place. So the ceremony is, is at yeah. the, the top of this venue, and then you come down, and we had drinks on the terrace, and then they set up the meal, and then we went to the, you know, so it was all in this one place. Um, and so everyone started arriving from two, and uh, I, I was fine. I was absolutely gloriously fine. Me and the girls were getting ready. We'd had some breakfast. Um, Gavin went down with his best man. They went in to play a game of football in the morning um, down at the local sort of place just in the town um, with all the guys that were sort of there and at the, at the, uh, that could make it. Um, and, and I was in the wedding suite, which was a, a different section to the room that we've been staying in a, a, apart from that. And, um, and I was like 100% fine. Like, I was like, no, it's all going. I think I've got everything. I was chatting through, making sure with... Um, 
uh, my best mate Graham, my maid of honor, I've done that, haven't I? I've done that, I've done that, and they're ready. Okay, good. Okay, so we're all sorted. Now, it wasn't until I put on the um, the under the undergarment to my dress because I had like a white sort of like almost just very plain white vet, like long vest essentially underneath the dress um, until I put that on and I went oh I feel a bit I feel a bit vomit I remember saying I feel vomit um, I think I need sparkling water so I said can someone get me a sparkling water that'll make me feel a bit better um, and that's when I first started, about two o'clock half two is when I went oh I'm getting a bit sick um, and uh and I don't know why, because I knew we were already married. It wasn't like he wasn't going to turn up. But I think it's a bit like that thing when you go on stage, I just want it to go really well. You yeah. know, I want it to be the best day. And I think that's the worry that you sort of go, you know, God, is everything going to go right? Yeah. Um, which is so ridiculous, because as soon as something goes wrong, you don't care yeah. um, on the day. But that's the, those are what's going through your head. And um, got ready and, and I, we did the walk to the venue and just up there was I said the venue it was just like up some stone steps and I was there within two minutes um and my friend sang as I walked down the aisle my friend Ben Goddard uh he brought his guitar over God love him um and he sang as I walked down the aisle and um uh Gavin was crying from the moment it started um and <laughs> we did the set yeah he was just already gone and um and I was okay at first, but for me, we'd written our own vows um, because you can. This is the joy of sort of yeah. when you're doing it in this way. Your ven your uh, ceremony can be how however you want it, really. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and uh, we had a friend doing the ceremony, which was a good mate of Gavin's, and he's he was really great. It was very very funny. Um, we had lots of lovely readings, um, but it was when Gavin read the vows because he's. Um, that I was a bit, I I yeah. couldn't absolutely couldn't handle it, and I was like, "Don't ruin my makeup." I've spent hours in makeup, you know, for goodness' sake. Like, um, and it was, and there's a great shot of us both crying actually on, on our wedding photos, where I'm I'm like dabbing with a tissue, and Gavin's just like literally unable to oh. to cope. And um, and I think it was the vows because it's so nice because they're very real and they're very what you want to say to someone, yeah. which is so nice about them. Hence why we really wanted to do it that way um and uh and that and so that yeah and the ceremony ended with um another friend of mine singing and we walked out um and then it was around this giant pool that had these views to die for and uh and it was just cocktails and champs and uh, around the pool with this uh, and it was just it was just delicious it was just so perfect from then on yeah. and it's funny because then things Nothing started to go wrong. That's so not true. But like I'd forgotten to put out the um, the favors for everyone, which was a little bottle of limoncello, um, and I'd forgotten to do that. And my, my uh, Graham, one of my um, best men in a way, uh, came over and just went, "We've not put the limoncellos out." And I went, "Don't care." And we just carried on because I just you just don't care. Little things that you forget to do, you just literally couldn't care less anymore. Yeah. Um, so it was, yeah, it was gorgeous and uh, and boiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that a picture of you I can see up on the shelf? Is that your wedding day? So this is the wedding book. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to show you it. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Oh, this is the wedding photo album. So that's oh, one. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Your dress is just divine, isn't it? Yeah, so I try and yeah, it, this is so. This is brilliant. Like they obviously, because you're when you get a photographer, they say, "Oh, well, you yes. can get one of these books for like three hundred quid," and you're like, "No, you can go and do it yourself at Photo Box or any of those places, Snapfish, whatever you want to do, and um, very very easily get one done for. I think this cost me like fifty quid. And it's so good. Like, I'm not just saying my own work is brilliant, yeah. but it, I, I have to say that I absolutely nailed this book. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find a really, oh, that's quite a nice one. Okay. I'm trying to find the crying one as well, but that's an image that. Oh, a... lovely. Look at that. Oh my gosh. You can just see, I can see the, like feel the vibe of it. It's just yeah. lovely, nice and yeah. relaxed and happy. That's what we loved. Oh, that's the picture of us crying. So there we go. I knew I'd find one. Oh. Oh, is it? There, there. Oh, yes. 
can't yeah. help but cry. Never so, yeah. tears. Actually, oh, well, I have a few things here. Look, this is from my mum. So my mum collects these and has collected them for years. And as a wedding gift, she gave me the the the, the um the bride and the groom version. She collects these. So that was a very wedding. nice. This was one of my gifts to Gavin, which is the song that I walked down the aisle of, and it's just like a piece oh. of um, music with just the date and stuff. How on lovely! It. I was going to ask about music because obviously you are very theatrical and, and love of music and, and dance and theatre and things like that. So uh, did you manage, did you do any singing on the day? Was there any? No, it was my day off. I yeah. was like, no, it's my day off. We're not doing it. I made everyone else do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had uh, like specific sort of moments. I didn't want to overdo it because our lives are theatrical. Do you know what I mean? And like everything about our lives are theatrical. I didn't want it to be about that on the day. I wanted it to be about, you know, just love and saying that yeah. we want to spend the rest of our lives together. So actually it wasn't sort of about that for me. Whereas I think some weddings, if you don't do it, that's the moment to be theatrical in your life, you know? So I, I, yeah. I the other way around makes so much more sense to me. But yeah, I was like, I'm not opening my mouth, you know, unless to say a vow, you oh. know, on the day. Um, so yeah, we, we, there was never any intention of me. I mean, I, I the amount of weddings I've sang at, you know, but I would never have done it uh, yeah. at my own. But um, but it was nice that I had so many people that I could go to, yeah, <laughs> um, to ask if they would, you know, yeah. sing something or do something. Um, one of the big um, one of the big things that we were disappointed with uh, when we were booking it was that they didn't allow any um, bands, uh, acoustic oh. li live bands at the venue, and that is what we really thought we wanted. Um, and it was a bit of a stickling point because I was like, I'm so disappointed and that's going to be terrible. Yeah. We're just going to have a DJ that's going to play dance music and I'm not going to like it. You know, I was like really like, like frustrated with that idea. And no matter how much I pushed the venue, they were like, we can't. It's not it's not allowed in the area mm -hmm. of Italy. Like it's a, it's yeah. illegal in Italy okay. to do that. So we were like, OK, all right. There's nothing I can do about it. It's the venue. We'll just cope. But they did keep saying to me, they said, um, the DJ is brilliant. The DJ is brilliant. And I was like, okay, all right. Not convinced, but I was like, all right. Now, when we got there, so we got married on the Wednesday and we got there on, on the Sunday and we met with the DJ on the Monday. And he was, he spoke really brilliant English because I was so worried. I thought, I said, what I don't want is like, <laughs> I don't yeah. want France. I don't want dance. I said, it's just not me. I said, I like cheesy pop, if anything. Like, give me, take that, <laughs> you know, give me five from the 1990, you know, 1996. Yeah. Um, give me Spice Girls, give me, you know, 80s power ballads. Like, just like, that's what I want. He said, you don't need to say anything else. And I said, well, I've made actually a whole Spotify list if you want it. Yeah. And he said, no, he said, you need to just trust me. And, and to say he was unbelievable is an understatement. He, every single track he picked was a tune. Me and Gavin just kept on going, tune! <laughs> Because it was all the things we knew and the all things that we'd grown up with and the all things we loved. And of course, we've got friends that were just absolutely on board with it. Um, and we're like, oh my God, this is such a tune. And like, we danced like the night away. My mum and dad were absolutely ridiculous um, for two retired people. Everyone just danced because it was that kind of music. So Aww. that's another thing that I'd say is you get your, we all get so, um we blinkered on well I need that that's what I want and 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 it's true and it is what you want and if, and if you really want to fight for it go for it but sometimes the alternative that you think is going to be terrible actually I mean I was so pleased with it and I couldn't have asked yeah. for more um so it was you know in the end it worked perfectly so I think that's again you know don't let those disappointments if there are some yeah. get to you because actually sometimes it's you never know it, it'll it work out the, out the right way doesn't it I mean yeah. I just listening to you I can hear just how amazing your day was there were so many standout moments by the sound of it you know um but I know obviously what you're out in Italy having this amazing wedding but you stayed there didn't you and actually had a mini moon in Florence is that right were you Yes, we did. Our our honeymoon idea is way is way different to what. And then we were like, listen, it's, we've basically been out there for a week. It's kind of a holiday anyway. That was that place that we were at was unbelievable. Yeah. 
And, and our honeymoon idea is something that we'll do in the future because we need a lot of time off and it's quite difficult okay. to get that amount of time off work. We want to do three to four weeks and we want to do South Africa safari. We want to then go to Mauritius, Maldives and, uh, you know, do some stuff like that. And it was like, I, we can't, I can't get that amount of time off work at this mm. moment. So we said, what do we do? And actually uh, another best friend of mine, uh, Jonathan Ellis and his now husband, Martin, um, said we would like to pay for your mini moon and oh, wow. we were like no stop and they were just <laughs> like no like it we we want you to have a couple of nights somewhere that's just yes. gorgeous and I said well we kind of fancy Florence we've not been there before everyone says how beautiful it is um and we kind of maybe think we want to go there and um and so Jonathan actually organized it for me um, and he said, right, I'll let me sort it and uh, it will be. And I knew and I could trust him on it. It was like one of those things that, you know, it's, once you find someone that gets your vibe, I was like, I'm going to trust him on that because I think he's going to do really well. Um, and do you know what? We loved it because we all, everyone started to leave on the Friday. And it was all quite sad because people were leaving, going home and it was over. Right. Um, and so we left the venue and everyone packed and there was tears and everyone said goodbye then we went down to the local train station and we hopped on a train to Florence and it wasn't, oh, wow. wasn't very long. It was, I don't, can't even remember how long it took, but we just hopped on this train. We had our bags and we hopped on this train to Florence. And um, while we're on the train, our photographer sent us a sneak peek list of photos. So there we were on this train and we were both just like welling up all over again going, oh my God, these pictures look amazing. I can't wait to see them all. <laughs> so on the way to Florence, we were like like really ogling our pictures and, and waiting for them to download. Because of course, nothing downloads as fast in yeah. Italy as it does anywhere else. And, um, and we got to Florence and we said, no, let's, I want to walk through the streets. We didn't have that much luggage. We were only there for two nights. We put the rest of it in the van. So we, uh, we walked around Florence. We just had, we, it was glorious and it was lovely and busy back in the day when there was crowds and um and we walked around and we got to this hotel and Gavin couldn't believe I could but Gavin couldn't believe how close it was because we were right opposite the like literally a, a, I could reach it and I was touching the Duomo wow. um in Florence and he was like is this where we're staying and I was like yeah this is it so I walked in and the this gentleman in a lovely suit behind um, behind the front desk just went uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wood and I went how do you know that that's weird there was lots of people there I said that how do you know that that's weird and he put he held up two of our headshots my, Jonathan had sent him our headshots oh my god um, and he went and I was like thank god we look like our headshots because it would be embarrassing um and he said um go and have it he, swear, he, swear, he got this way he said go and give them a drink I'm going to sort their room out and tell them so anyway we went and had this drink and I was like god I'm feeling very very nice and uh, he came and he said, right, your room is ready. And we went up to our room and he took us up there and he said, I've upgraded you because it's your honeymoon. Um, and he said, Jonathan has been saying that you must, you know, because you're very, very busy and this is not normally your life and um, able to go on holiday much. And I was like, oh, gosh, great. So he went to this room and it was two floors. It was the size of my flat in London. It was unbelievable. Um, and we went and we had a balcony that overlooked the Duomo with a hot tub. Oh. Well, honestly, I never wanted to leave. I'd, have, I'd still be there now. If, if I could, I'd be there now. It was utter bliss. And we walked around Florence for two days, um, which is beautiful. We had all these, we went to just, any restaurant that was near us really we went to all these lovely gardens Vivoli Gardens in Florence um there's a wonderful bridge forgive me I've forgotten the name of it but it's got all these sort of like jewelers and uh, across it literally scattered over the bridge um and it's just it, it was it's the it was the perfect way to end it because suddenly we were back together and we we're just like you know a talking about the wedding talking about the yeah. day um discussing you know like stuff that was funny stuff that didn't work um and just really having a, that sort of time together to to process it whilst it not being sort of like yeah too much you know um yeah and then we came back and yeah I was back to work for a couple of weeks as was Gav and um and it was all go again but I think it's I think even if you can't have your main honeymoon to do something like that I think is 
I would suggest anyone to do, even if it's a night or, you know, mm. like even if it's just your local spa that's down the road from where your venue is, just yeah. something that is for you to just, just to think, go over the day again and just to go, oh my God, wasn't that funny? Or didn't they annoy you? Yeah, they're not being invited next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. just stuff like that because it happens. People, of course, you know, people are funny at weddings and, um, yeah. and there's always someone that acts badly and you just go, yeah can't wait for my bunch of flowers to apologize for that you know and it was funny um and uh and yeah so it was uh it was i would always suggest having something even if you can't do your main honeymoon and i mean we're two years later and i mean yes okay covid ruined it but um you know we still haven't had that main honeymoon and now might leave it to a bigger anniversary just to sort of make yeah. it make it make a thing of it more than yeah, I mean, we were the same. We had um, we got married in November, um, ten years, just over ten years ago now. But um, so we had a mini moon. We went to Prague, which was lovely, and we did exactly that, where we literally just unpacked everything and just in our minds and talked yeah. about the wedding. But then I fell pregnant with my twins and we still haven't had a honeymoon. So we keep saying we must do it, must do it. So actually having that time, like exactly what you said, um, at least gave us something, you know, it yeah. was a nice way to sort of finish and round things off. Um, but you've given us loads of top tips and advice, but is there anything else at all that you can um, share with our followers and our couple? I um, I, I was a, a, an Etsy queen during my uh, planning my wedding. Like Etsy is, you can get anything on Etsy. Yeah. Um, and and if you've got something really specific, I, and, and I think it's something that I've definitely got into while we've been in lockdowns and people have started new businesses, but supporting those smaller businesses that these people are doing, because they do it really well. And, yeah. and you find, you know, you find so many gems on there and they really appreciate the work and they really appreciate you using them, but also you get brilliant stuff and it's, you can get anything. And, and although it seems like a lot of work, you know, having to, I, I, I did everything. I planned, you know, the, um, and also Pinterest, like, is just like the next, like, I just think I couldn't have planned my wedding without Pinterest. Mm. Um, just gives you so many ideas and stuff that's so easy to do. And, I actually feel so not proud, proud's not the right word, but I like the the fact that we did that and I planned all of that. And yes, I said, right, I want like I wanted um a very specific uh table settings that were like copper pipes. Yeah. Um and I wanted the um table menu where everyone's names are, the table is um to be also a giant copper pipe sort of stand. Um well, getting copper piping is really easy. And so we got copper piping and I said, you know, we put it together and we sorted it all out and we designed it. And that was, I just went, I, you know, we, we did all that yeah. and we created all that. And there's something really nice in that. Um, I mean, some people aren't that. I had my friend Lisa Matheson who got married the year before me, who was one of my bridesmaids. Um, she absolutely didn't want to do any of it. She wanted to turn up on the day and it all be done that's fine if that's what you want to be but there was just I think if you're if you're that way inclined and you want to sort of go about it and do stuff on your own and you probably save a bit of money that way but also just there is just a great yeah that was all my design and I yeah. did that and I got people to help me and I got small businesses to help me and yeah. there's something really satisfying about it satisfying yeah. is the word and yeah. I would say do that because it's actually really fun mm. um because you've just got so much to plan and it makes you really involved in your own wedding, which sounds so ridiculous, but you know, it means that you were involved in every aspect on it. You didn't just turn up on the day in a dress. Yeah. And, um, and I really loved that about, about the wedding and that's, and it was, you know, two, and I took me two years, you know, yeah. to do it and plan it all, but we gave ourselves the time. We didn't rush it. And it was wonderful. Brilliant. Oh, well, it sounds amazing. And I mean, what, what would you say is the best thing about being married now? What's what does it all mean to you? How has it sort of changed things? It's funny, isn't it? I, I do love saying husband. Uh, yeah. I say that all the time. I, I just call him that in the house now. He's no longer Gavin. Um, <laughs> you know, you come in, come in from the door. Hello, husband. Yeah, you know, that, I say that all the time. So I do enjoy that. But there is it's funny, isn't it? We had lived together for years and a lot of people sort of tend to do that now. You know, it's that you're living together and then you decide to get married. <laughs> check basically that it all works yeah. um and um and I think it, you would think it wouldn't change it but you do you you suddenly feel um we 
is secure the right word? Maybe it is. And I don't mean it in a sort of like, you know, locked in way, but you just go, oh, you, you, you pick me and I pick you. And, yeah. uh, and we picked each other for life. And, uh, mm. and there is just something really nice about that. And I think it does change. They're yeah. not just living together and doing that now. It's that you've, you've said, yeah, half everything that I own is now yours and, and vice versa. And, you know, I had a dog for, for 13 years. She's 13. I met Gavin seven years ago, mm. you know, so she was my dog. She's not now. She's ours. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I can't, and it's just stuff like that that you go, yeah, we, we, we went the full, we went the whole hog with that. And, um, yeah. and it's really, there's a comfort in it. Definitely. Cause I think we, we all spend years, don't we sort of building ourselves up, building a career and all the rest of it. And then actually just to meet somebody that just allows you to bring those walls down and just yeah. be and enjoy and share and, and yeah, be the first person that you tell your great news to and things like that, I think is priceless, isn't it? So Oh, well, it sounds like, crikey, he is, he's the man, isn't he? Gavin, he's the man. <laughs> he's the man. If you could see him now, he's bringing, he's clearing his shed out. Yeah. And, uh, and he is moving old paint tins that we no longer use. They've probably gone all hard. And he's going to take them to the skip. There's my husband, oh. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow. I <laughs> love him. Oh, well, listen, it has been a delight to talk oh, to you. Oh, thank you so much. All of our followers are going to enjoy listening to this. And um, we appreciate your time. I mean, obviously, with things starting to open up, how is that affecting you? What have you got kind of coming up? Is there any sort of milestones that you guys are working towards? Um, I mean, it's all a little bit still fingers crossed um, for, for theatres uh, and large, you know, obviously indoor large groups is yes. definitely the last thing that can possibly come back. So... Um, we still fingers crossed, but I'm hoping that we will, I'm currently in come from away and I was when we stopped, I'd only been running five weeks, um, but hopefully come from away, the musical will be back, um, sometime in the summer yeah. and we can start to see, you know, normality start to resume yeah. in our, in our industry. Um, yeah. it is a say, it is a touch and go, um, uh, as, as I'm sure everyone can imagine, um, but you know hopefully we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel i really do think so so we're rooting for you all we're hoping yeah, that, that it's the case and that you get back to doing what you love because uh yes it's i as i can attest to it's it's very difficult being away from you know the things that you love doing so yes well very best of luck to you and um, thank, you. thank you very much for your time oh have you got the dog there is the dog there she oh came to say hello oh she it, couldn't make it on the day of the wedding. She wasn't there. She would have been too hot anyway. No. Oh, well, she's adorable. Look at that. <laughs> like, what, what am I doing here? Who's And where's that voice coming from? <laughs> Bewildered. Oh, well, listen, thank you so much, Alice. It's been a joy. And um, yes, we look forward to following you um, in the theatre very soon. Thank you so much. Thank no worries. You. Take care. Cheers.